doesn't like whatever it is. I think I'm still gonna try to push through it just to check it out. Alright, the Hiss Barrier. The Hiss Residence Field is a physical implement, uh, impediment that is difficult to define. Hiss Barriers appear as two ways or as ways to impede escape or access by Bureau personnel. Two methods have been discovered by lowering them. One, destroy the multiple concentrated residence sources found in the vicinity, destroy the his entities in the area. The residence fields seem to require support for their size and density of others' non-connected sources by his residence. Without the ability to draw from these sources, the barrier will fall. Does an inactive structure made by the his residence qualify as a conscious being? Does the distinction make any difference when considering the hiss? What does the very act of building walls to prevent the movement tell us about the hiss? And to what degree is it watching and planning? <sighs> hey look. Right order of me, apparently. But I don't remember doing that. The Havana Summary. An auditory event occurring in the United States embassies in Havana, injuring the majority of diplomatic staff stationed there. Blank deaths were reported and outgoing information has been managed. Bureau agents arrived at the embassy the same day as the event was reported through federal channels, but were too late to witness the AWE, which was referred to have been blank. Staff experienced sudden intense vibrations and noises accompanied by intense pressure in their ears. This lasted for blank minutes. No visual phenomena was witnessed, and the scene was co uh, condoned off. The embassy staff was transported to the continental U.S. After Formula I-9 was recited in the vicinity, the single cowboy boot began to vibrate, identifying it as an altered item. The item was contained and brought to the Bureau for examination. See case file AI-85 for detail. In Cuba. Alright, I'm gonna try to push through. Just charge it. I guess that was a silly thing to do then. Hmm. How do I get rid of those things then? Can I like force them out? Um, all the way back here? Oh gosh. Okay. Um, this way, right? There it is again. Mm -hmm. A welcome message. So I saw him. So at least there's that. There were two guys up here. Last time. Probably go down that way, but I just I'd like to check everything off before I make my way through. Am I gonna get shot again through here or no? Doesn't seem like it. These guys are gonna fall and shoot at me. something. That's tricky. I've almost made it to the communications department though. Got him. Before I go in there, to dead letters. Nope, that would be the way to go. Okay. Let's go to dead letters. 
cleanse the point. Oi. Did I not shoot you? Get out of here. One down. Done. All right. One shot. Two shots. Get out of here, you. Done. Okay. Oof. There's those guys down. Where's the purification point? Up there. Ready? One, two. Cleansing. I feel bad for those floating people. Like, even if I can just put them out of their misery, it's better than nothing. Fast travel point. There are ways to the communication department, but there is more things to visit first. Just look at it. Eight inches wide and capable of storing a whopping 80 kilobytes. <laughs> Stolen by our friends at the CIA, the disk held the launch codes to Soviet nukes. Uh, this is not the disk, of course, but one exactly like it, a perfect fusion of concepts vibrating in the Cold War era collective unconscious. A receptacle. It is a receptacle for dangerous energies to hone in on. And they did. We don't have the details, but when things started flying around the disk, it was transferred to us. It's an object of power. Oh, OP. Oops. Oh, and it can launch things telekinetically through the air. Uh, to date, we, we've launched maybe three dozen pencils. And once, we even launched a cup. Hmm. I can make better use of that, I think. I just gotta find it. That is an old computer there. Communications. We're on the right track. That would be the way to go, but there's more to explore, Jesse. There's always more to explore. Like this, the machine god. I had a dream, I built the thing I saw in my dream. A machine that will contain god, but not the god that you know or the one anyone knows, a new god. This machine will be his body, his heart, and his mind. I made it just like the dream showed me. I used the motor from the refrigerator, the coils from my toaster, the fan plugs, uh, the fans, plus the timing belt from my car's engine, the wheels on my son's skateboard. God can't move yet, but the dream said he would learn how to on his own. This is just a beginner's body, like a baby's, but a machine's instead. God only needs a place to start. If you want to interview me, please contact me at the address on the envelope. My phone does not work anymore. I had to use the dialing plate on God. Interesting and spooky. Right, so that's where we came from. Let me get in there from here. Trench, dead letter approval. Greetings, Director Trench. I would like to thank you for approving my request for the Dead Letters Archive. Cataloging the Bureau's collection of delinquent mail will provide an extremely handy database that research teams can use to search any connection to related topics found among the letters. Aside from more functional purposes, the Archive will allow us to present these windows into authentic human encounters with the paranatural world. 
The letters came to us from various places and times, gathered by the postal service as undeliverable. The bureau is in the perfect home for them. I realize not all letters contain accounts of genuine paranormal or paranatural activities or events, but even the inurious, or uh, even the inurious ones, I don't know how to pronounce that word, allow us to insight into how the unknown is perceived by real people. Of course, I will first compile a system to allow us to analyze the letters for any information or suspected connection to AWEs and other altered materials. So thank you again. Can't wait to delve into my dead letters. P. Bartwell. Get undefined reading. Singing fish. Mr. Governor, I called the police, but they never came to my house. I got a problem, and you got to send folks to fix it. I got my wife one of them singing fish on the walls. It's not a real fish. It sings when you hit a button, but it's got the devil in it. It flies around at night and sings devil's songs, says lots of cuss words. The devil got in my house because of the fish, and you got to come handle it. My wife is real upset. When can you come? Sincerely, Dwayne Barr. That sucks, Dwayne. I hate those fish. They're not my favorite. Here's a little song I wrote. Dead presidents. To whom it may concern, I am being contacted by the past presidents of the United States of America. They appear as spirit guides, giving me their wisdom. John Adams keeps saying I need to fix America, but I can't really understand him. There's a lot of opinions. People tell me I imagined it, but Theodore Roosevelt showed me how to fix my lawnmower, and I didn't know a thing about lawnmowers. Explain that. I have great dead men telling me about the past and the present. If you'd like to use my abilities to help run the government, please let me know. I know the White House could use me. Yours in earnest, James Bartholomew. I am probably James. I'm sure I could use a hand. Anything in here? Oh, what do we got? Book Club Penny. Hello, avid readers. The Bureau Book Bunch will convene at the usual spot on the corner table of the cafeteria at 5 p.m. on Tuesday. Currently discussing Unless You by J.D. Brooks. Everyone should get their reviews to me by Monday before lunch so I can generate some conversation starters before the meeting. Happy reading. Penny Bartwell. Stepping to the FBC press, ask to do this, ask to me, but do, don't touch, and don't be much, let's join the flesh of kings, let's join the flesh of kings. Together. 
uncomfortable. Not a fan of them, they're threshold kids. department. I think we've checked out all of our other boxes. Great. I still don't like the floaty people, but, you know. Push the fingers through the what? Object of power. Looks like the piss have latched on to it. We need to turn it. Seem too happy. Okay. Ouch. Hmm. Three, one, two, three, go. It seems like it's only got a three burst. Floppy disk. <laughs> it's harder to hear you when I'm here. It's like the channel's been changed. The board's in charge here. Their pyramids in the bureau seal. Are they really the ones pulling the strings? I'm not their director. I'm no one's director. We'll see about that. Yeah, now I've got the force. Sick. True Jedi now. Jump. Jump. We can use them to smash each other. That's cool. But more than that, I can use it to break down those creepy histus. <laughs> Just like you were. I 
couldn't quite get him through this. Way. Behind that wall, can I not break it down? So that goes like right through their shields, that's good to know. to be classified or declassified. I've already been in there. Okay. Cool. So that's something. Can I get through that thing? Which way am I supposed to go? So if I'm in pneumatics... I need to make it further that way. I guess follow the thread. Notes for Penny by L. Sampson. I don't usually read a lot of sci fi, but as far as space operas go, this was all right. The tale, unless you could refer to a bunch of things in the book, I guess, but I thought it was a little vague and stupid. The way the characters kept throwing it around, almost like a catchphrase, got real annoying real fast. The best part of the story was the space battles. I sided with the fixers, obviously, because they had the coolest tech and their motives made the most sense to me. Honestly, I, if I had to choose between some hoity-toity flowers and gun space hippies or badass bunch of warriors who go around devouring planets like cheap sushi on a Sunday, I know who I'm picking. That scene where they invade city planet and convert the entire population using those brain worms that space dogfight between those two ace pilots signed me the fuck up. What kind of ruined the whole thing for me was when my favorite character got killed not even halfway through the story by getting a battery cylinder launched through his face using a gravitational anomaly. His death didn't even feel necessary at all. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Floppy disk. Containment procedure must contain in a cell with no other loose materials. The object is an 8-inch diskette containing Soviet area nuclear launch codes. When bound, the object allows para-utilitarians to telekinetically lift the materials and throw in a short distance. See Dr. Darling presentation 1115 for more information. The object is currently bound to blank for research purposes, stolen from Soviet military base located in blank by agents blank and blank with the CIA. The diskette contained launch codes to blank missiles, believed to be reserved for use agent blank. After being returned to America, the diskette began throwing computational hardware at members of the decoding team. An informant in the CIA tipped the bureau off and was requisi uh, requisitioned by agents the next day. Oh wait, did I miss one other thing? A demolitions expert. The bureau only knows only allows certain highly trained individuals to handle volatile materials and weaponry. Our demolition experts are instructed to use of explosives in dimensions with distinct physical laws. 
making them important assets in engineering work as well as combat situations. His demolition experts are the only observed his variants to wield the specially built rocket propelled grenade that is designed to identify and track blank entities once fired, making them a threat to whose terminations would be prioritized in combat scenarios. I find it remarkable that his restrict, uh, restrict usage of this weapon to the bureau personnel who train specifically for its use. What does this tell us about his behavior? Could it not pass along? new information to corrupted entities still too many unknowns refer to file blank for full report and his ranger the rangers in the bureau are well trained and well armed expeditionary forces their his corrupt counterparts are far are equally formidable prior to corruption rangers are trained to use a variety of weapons in order to face any threat found during the awe response or threshold exploration including submachine guns, assault rifles, automatic shotguns. His rangers utilize these weapons as well, and advanced tactics taught by bureau instructors. Some are additionally outfitted with bureau-made body armor. His rangers have no observed paranatural abilities beyond some protecting by a shield of dense Hiss resonance, compatible of stop or capable of stopping bullets. Consider the advanced training the Hiss rangers are capable of applying to their situation. It is feasible to consider the human mind still remains intact to some degree, or is the Hiss able to tap into their combat training to utilize it? Further observation is required. Refer to file blank for full report. Thanks, Emily. Another house memory. Emily said that the hotline can be reached through the mail room. Almost can understand it. But not quite, it's still a little too unknown I guess Willow AWE outcome Reinformation Campaign Summary of Willow AWE National news sites have begun publishing the story of the polar bear attack in the Alaskan town you all know I don't like to boast, but claiming that the family was killed by a migrating polar bears desperate for food because their ecosystem was being ruined by global warming was a strike of genius. Using current ecological concerns make the public much less likely to blank. So another AWE behind us, the public is none the wiser. Well done everyone. It was a strong campaign and perfectly executed. This doesn't mean we can't stop monitoring blank and blank for any off-message opinions, but it's looking like we're in the clear. Tomasi out. What is redacted? Is it the floating people making that noise? So that's coming from the speakers? Locked. Maybe there's a key nearby. Oh my. Claiming this control point for me. That's nice. Oh, hi there. Clearance level one. This must open the door. There are other clearance level one doors too.
America overnight, mystifying the airwaves for more than 29 years. Thank you for staying up with us. Ghosts. We've had many callers over the years tell us of hauntings, voices, and other phantasmagorical phenomena. Today, friend of the show, Dr. Quincy Reagan, tells his story. Quincy. Thanks. This is something I experienced recently while staying at the Chili Pines Motel in Macon for last year's Suspicious Con. <laughs> I was in room 47. The night manager, an avid listener of the program, insisted I take this particular room. Now, the manager explained that years back, the body of a man was discovered under the bed, inside that wooden border that motel beds tend to have. And the body had been there a week, mm. he said. Guests had stayed there, sleeping with the corpse of foot alone. They only found the body when housekeepers complained about the Gross. smell. Hauntings have been reported in room 47 ever since. I don't doubt that at I all. I happily took the room. I fell asleep pretty quick, checking under the bed first, of course. Of course. No ghosts visited me. No chilly spots or flickering lights. But when I woke up, I found myself under the bed. Hmm. It was dark and stiflingly hot. Luckily, I was able to push the mattress off and crawl out before I suffocated. The night manager was kind enough to find me another room. Hmm. There you have it, listeners. What we call Spooky. ghosts take many forms. Quincy was brave enough to tell his story. And I encourage you to keep calling and writing whenever you encounter something strange. Something you can't explain. Maybe you're seeing colors that we have no name for. Maybe your toaster is possessed. <laughs> Remember, dear listeners, when no one else believes you, we do. do. America Overnight will be right back. Hmm. <laughs> man's whole career. just over there. I didn't see anything. It was like in between. thinking too deeply into it. I think I'm gonna have to pause for now. Gotta go get my kiddos, but I will definitely be back. This game is so interesting. Alright, I'll be back in a little bit. Take care. Ooh. 